the claim I'm going to be reviewing today is um, sustainable design practices cut the cost of traditional building. And the uh, secondary claims are employing sustainable design can reduce the first cost in the construction of a new building. Using durable, long-lasting, sustainable materials can reduce facility maintenance and repair costs. And sustainable building may at times have higher upfront costs but tend to pay off in later years. The first claim, employing sustainable design can reduce the first cost in the construction of a new building. Um, basically, that when you're using sustainable design, what you're doing is you're, you're reducing infrastructure. And what basically, when you're reducing infrastructure, you're taking out sewer systems and trying to use natural drainage, which isn't as effective. Another one, you want to have lawns, this traditional lawn. And of course, when you reduce infrastructure, you reduce the size of roads and parking lots, which is inconvenient. Um, another thing, when you're using sustainable design to cut the cost of the construction, um, you have to use natural ventilation and through daylighting, which would cause new problems. So, like, in order to do daylighting for their natural ventilation, your house has to be at a certain angle towards the sun which would be weird if you're in a neighborhood and you're building a new house and your house is angled differently from the other ones. That's one. Another one is that natural ventilation isn't as precise as air conditioning. Um, and that's why traditional buildings would be better. And the second, another claim was using durable, long-lasting, sustainable materials can reduce facility maintenance and repair costs. Um, one example would be solar panels for paying for electricity for the facility. Um, solar panels are, oh, Rob Safer, he had solar panels built into his house uh, in Woodstock, New York. Basically, he did reduce his electrical bill, however, there's new fees adjusted to that, such as a $240 fee to stay connected to the electrical grid, which is another one, and your insurance premium is increased by $100, just because you have solar panels, so those are more costs in maintaining your facility that you're still gaining. Another one was Linda Wright, a CEO of Solar City, um, said one of the major things with solar panels would be that you need an inverter. Inverters are what convert solar energy into usable energy in the facility. And these usually tend to co uh, cost high, like $2,500, and they're very expensive to replace. So. You may be having um, reduced cost of facilities, however, there's other fee, uh, hidden costs, you could say, that are also attributed to sustainable design. Uh, the third claim, sustainable building may at times have higher upfront costs, but tend to pay off in later years. Um, it's higher, the costs are usually higher than you expect, depending on where you, the location of where you live. Um, because the, the sustainable design materials are only located in larger areas. When you want to get it into the area you're building your infrastructure, uh, your, your building, um, it usually costs more money to transport that material because it's coming from farther away, and you need more time in order to build it because they have to order certain parts in order to get these in order to get it to the site, which costs more time and more money. Um, SpecPan, a research firm, surveyed various architects on the cost percentage increase of sustainable design processes, and basically what they found out is that it usually costs 10% to 90% more than a traditional building. And these are my reasons to why I believe that sustainable design practices aren't as effective as traditional building for cost.
All right, your ID, the main and the secondary claims pretty clearly. Your signposting on the two individual points is fine. Uh, you do explain what you mean by sustainable design. I'm not sure if you're committing a fallacy of equivocation here or if, in fact, they, they, you're talking about the same things. It seemed to me like the uh, buildings that were being described by the advocate were not just houses, and some of what you seem to be describing are residences. Maybe it's, maybe it's applicable to both. You need a clearer explanation of that. Uh, you did seem to suggest that it's all drainage and lawns and roads and parking that become issues and I, I suspect that there is a good claim there. The problem is that you need to state it as a counterclaim instead of letting us figure out what the inference is. And that is, you know, the counterclaim is basically there are substantial trade-offs that you make when you choose sustainable design. And those trade-offs include uh, convenience, reliability, and uh, the needs of people who live in those particular situations. And then I think you can develop some arguments on those particular points. What you have is a very generic statement on that that doesn't really explain what all the problems are. And everything there is very hypothetical. I don't get any source citation on this at all. On the next part where you do talk about uh, the solar panels, you do provide some uh, examples. You've got an example, at least, that talks about insurance and fees that somebody had to pay. And then you had uh, an authority who, prov who talks about the hidden costs. Um, that's actually what your counterclaim is on this point, and that is that there are substantial hidden costs to sustainable design, and you're going to use solar panels as an illustration of some of those hidden costs costs. Now the question is, do those hidden costs, are they substantial enough that would prevent it from paying off in the amount of time that the advocate was talking about? I'm not sure, and that's where you need a little bit more comparison. Um, the same sort of thing on the last point where you talk about limitations, you know, putting your house at an odd angle, or how long it's going to take to get uh, the materials there, or time delays, Gesundheit, uh, you mentioned that it's going to be a 10 to 19 percent increase in cost. Well, is that returnable after a period of time? Here's the problem. I've never heard any reference in your argument to the evidence that the advocate presented. We don't have any statistic for making a comparison between the percentage that you just talked about and what the advocate was talking about. About. So without the contrast to the advocate's claims, all we have are your counterclaims. And the counterclaims are not bad in and of themselves, but they don't necessarily seem to be as responsive as they could be to the claims that the advocate presented. This might be a, a clearer issue if we had just listened to the speeches back to back, which we will be doing in the debates, and then we would know whether or not your arguments are as applicable as they say they are. All right, you also want to be a little bit careful about your presentation. You, you look a little uncertain there on your feet. I got nervous feet, basically, just swinging back and forth, you know, try, try and uh, stand still. You don't have to stand rigid like a statue, but you do want to feel a little bit like you're in control instead of, you know, I'm uncomfortable. That's the way all your anxiety is coming out. All right, thank you.